How y'all doing? Good. Good. So uh, you said you uh, changed up your diet in, in the off season. What were kind of the, some of the foods that you were eating? Um, I went no carbs for a little bit. I tried to stay away from fried and eating out because I, I took a lot of advantage of being home. So I told my mom what I wanted to do, and she made sure to have the meals ready for me. And what kind of meals were you having? Uh, a lot of just baked chicken, salmon, and all, lots of vegetables. And I cut back on like rice and stuff like that. Have you, was, was it a hard transition for you at first? No, because I know what I wanted to do. At first, I don't don't get me wrong. You had them days like, I would love to go to In and Out, you know. But um, when you know you got a, a goal on your mind, like you got you know what you got to do. How did you stay motivated during that period? Um, honestly, watching my older brother play football, knowing just and also seeing Arizona football, like dang, I could be out there, you know. And it was just like coming back for vengeance, you know. Then also seeing. Like my long term goals in the NFL and seeing my brothers, like the step, steps you got to take, you got to stay motivated. What would you say went into the decision to opt out and not play last year? It was a tough decision. I spoke it over with my family, thought on it a long time, and um, I feel it was just my best interest. Were you, was it mostly sort of COVID? Yeah, a lot related? of, co yes, a, a lot of n not knowing, you know? So that's when I stepped back because, uh, I had a grandma as well that was living in the house, kind of like home, like, you know, so I was like, kind of wanting to lay back on this for a little bit. I was so uh, very unsure. Was it hard to not play football? Probably the first time you haven't played football in the fall for what, like 10 years, Yeah, years? yeah, it was difficult. It was difficult. So to get my mind off the difficultness, I just made sure I kept grinding. I like, so I was out of physical contact football, but I was working towards it, you know? Were you working out with somebody? At a, were you working out at yeah, a I was working out at a TNT facility for a long time. Well, the facilities were closed, so we was just at a park doing it like that. Was that in Long Beach? San Dimas. I was making a drive. Oh, San Dimas. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. How often did you make that drive? Whew, uh, I want to say at least three to four times a week. Then um, the days I wouldn't go to him, I would be driving to Thousand Oaks to get my D-line training in. So it was a... It was a lot to be dedicated to that, but I knew what I, I knew what my goal was, so I had to stick to the script. You're driving from Long Beach to San Dimas or Long Beach to Thousand Oaks? Yeah, filling my gas up tank every day. <laughs> what, what did you miss the most being away for the year? My brothers. My brothers, like them caught, like we stayed in touch, no doubt, but it's a different vibe and a different feel when we're gearing up, ready to go to war together. I miss that. Preparing throughout the week, this tough stuff. I know they go through to these Saturdays, so... I, they would call me before the game. We'd have our talks, each player. Not every single player, but we, I'd talk to them, and it was just like, I see them in their uniform, like, I'm, I'm missing out, you know, but it was a tough decision. What was it like seeing the, the changes, uh, losing the previous staff and then getting a new one while being remote? Did that in any way, were you concerned maybe this isn't the right place for you with the changes, or were you committed to coming back no matter what? Um, it was, of course, concerning, but... Um, I've never even transferred like middle schools or elementary, you know, so when I brought the idea up to my parents, they, they were like, you started at Arizona, you know, at least see the coaching staff, talk to them. And um, through that whole process, I, I talked to a lot of uh, guys from my freshman year. We had a winning season, you know, and um, I'm talking about the older guys as well, like alumni now. I spoke to Khalil Tay, Cedric Peterson, like spoke how, that, how, how I was feeling. And it was just like, because, you know, Khalil could have left as well, you know. He just told me about his experience, and um, I, I really had a long sit down and conversation with him. He could, we were Wildcats at the end of the day. We got to finish where we start. Did, did you talk to Coach Hunley pretty early on? Yes, yes. As soon as um, I believe he got the job, he made his phone calls. We had a great conversation. I told him my goals, and he told me um, he can get me to my goals, and he's going to push me. Did you ever know him before that phone call? Because he would, he would always come around practices. And I've met him, but I never had a deep convo. It's just like a hello, how you doing? I never had a deep convo. But um, I was, uh, TJ Husmanzada was my coach in high school, and I believe they worked together in the league at a point in time, so he gave me some insight on Hunley. So that when the phone call came, it was kind of natural. Are you playing the strong side end position? Yes, is anchor. That, anchor, is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yes. Okay, and what's, when, what's your role in, 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 in that position in this defense? Um, going to the tight end side, mostly in the six eye, and if he uh, controlling that C gap, you know, getting to the passers, just being disruptive. Yeah, you seem like you've kind of been a man on a mission out here. I think you've earned Desert Dude status at least once, mm -hmm. maybe more than once. What's been kind of your mindset throughout this spring? Um, Coach Brown getting us motivated. We like um, 
one practice doing good isn't good enough. We have to keep building blocks. You know, we know we're facing each other out here, and like the competition is going to get tougher down the road. So we just want to try to get get better every day. Then, if you think you had a good practice, go back and watch film because there's something better you always could have done. Hi, right, one more question for JD. How much are you looking forward to Saturday's game being back in Arizona Stadium, fans in the stands, music, the band, whole nine yards? It's amazing. I can't wait. That's a great atmosphere already coming in. I see it on social media. Um, I was walking in today, and some random person uh, came up to me, was talking about the game, and uh, we're getting buzzed around the city. Like when I'm grabbing food out, people they have my gear on. They're noticing uh, bringing up the spring game, so I feel like it's a great buzz coming around it. I feel like Coach Fish did a great job getting the city to come in, and um, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Are you on Team Red or Team Blue? Team Blue. Let's do it. Team Blue. And <laughs> yeah. What, and so, what are the stakes here? Um, Booby was talking about food, maybe better food for the team. Yeah, I, I don't. I didn't get into great depth into it. I know it's bragging rights for sure, but um, I believe we have uh, food trucks. I believe, and um, Coach Fish mentioned it in the meeting. I think there's some luxury trucks. Then the losers go eat some. I, mean, I know it's hot dogs for sure. The losers eating hot dogs, so I want a big man's meal that day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, JB. All right, appreciate y'all.